Hey, my name is Mark, and I wanted to make a quick overview of uh, some standards and um, comp settings and export settings when you're working in After Effects. Someone on Reddit made a uh, post, not sure you know, why her, um, her YouTube videos were kind of looking um, very blurry and just not sharp and, and uh, just wrong aspect ratios and such. So I kind of want to go over a couple things. So when you're building... Uh, something you have to think about where it's going. So 480p, I would just consider this one dead at this point, um, as it's used basically for DVD and not many other uh, options. And you can take a lot of these others and just downsample your exports and your comps into um, into that resolution, and um, it would basically look the same. Now, if you're uh, if you're working on you know something for web use, you probably want to be working in 720p or 1080p. Um, just because those are standardized on YouTube and Vimeo and they're, you know, they're very common. I mean, it, let's say if you did something in 1080p, you could actually show it in a movie theater, uh, whether it's an ad or something like that, that plays before movie. Um, and they would have basically everything, you know, able to, to play it. Now, uh, for 2k and 4k, 2k is barely higher than, uh, than 1080p. So, um, most of the times you just want to work in 1080p unless you're doing something for someone and they specifically asked or something in 2k um as far as 4k that's more of a um a newer tv and film standard it's been around for film for a long time but uh it's making its way into tv in the next couple of years so um you might be asked to do um you know designs and stuff like that at, at that resolution not very likely unless it's going on a big projector um for a seminar of some sort and they are actually running a 4k setup um, and then there's some obscure resolutions that you might run into if you do some designs or backdrops for uh, like those mega churches kind of things, because they'll sometimes have their entire um, back of the stage as multiple projectors, and you would need the exact pixel ratio for stuff like that. Now, <clears throat> the one thing that is really going to impact your your render times is really how many pixels on the screen are currently being processed. So. Uh, keep that in mind. So you don't want to just be like, oh, I'll just do 4K. Well, 4K has 8.2 million pixels. Um, that's ridiculous when it comes to trying to process some of the, the complex animations and uh, effects that you might be doing. Uh, if you're doing 1080p, it's a little more reasonable if you're you know wanting to work in HD. Um, 720p is half, basically, of 1080p when it comes to the pixel count. So if you're... Um, if you're going to be working in 1080p, or if you're going to be working in 720p, and you're considering doing 1080, you might as well just do it. It's going to run a little slower, but in the end, you're going to have um, a much better product. You know, because like, you'll have a more versatile uh, video that you can put wherever you want. Now, as far as export settings, um, I've been using DNX HD, which is a codec created by uh, Avid. Now, uh, Avid makes Media Composer and some other uh, professional programs out there, but they have multiple codecs for when you go to export. So you just basically uh, pick a bit rate and then some um, uh, the resolution and frame rate kind of stuff. Now, the benefit of DNX HD, it also supports an alpha channel, which um, so if you're doing something, you want to have a lower third, so you want to have something uh, uh, pop up, you know, out of the bottom corner, and it doesn't just like it doesn't cover the whole screen. There's some opacity, stuff like that. It means it has an alpha channel and you're able to export with alpha channels with DNS HD. Um, most of the time I don't, I don't bother with stuff like that. I'll, I'll bring the comp into uh, after effects and work with it that way. But um, that is a really good codec to be working with. And it's, it's good to export to that and then bring it into like uh, media encoder or whatever, however you're encoding it, whether you're doing it right from premiere Um and then set up your, your settings for web. Because if you export this, let's say it's a five minute animation and it takes, let's say six hours to export or 10 hours to export, you don't want to have to redo it. If you're like, oh my God, I forgot to have this layer on. You can, if you export in DNA HD, you can then bring both uh, the, the fixed area of the project and the full comp that you created before that you exported into Premiere, line it up and export from there. And you don't have to worry about um, re-exporting, you know, a, a eight hour project. Um, and and that will save you time and potentially the, the customer that you're working for 
will appreciate the the turnaround time, even if there was a mistake like that. So um, let's let's go ahead and jump into uh, After Effects and go over some of the uh, the creating the comp stuff. So um, sorry, I had something on a red background before. Now, if you're uh, if you're building something. Uh, a lot of times I just go with the 1080p one I created. I do a lot of the stuff in uh, uh, 24 frames per second, uh, which is 23976. Um, but you can you can select some pre-mades like 1080p, um, 24. Uh, but a lot of the times I just kind of work in uh, 1080p. If I if I plan it to be 720p, then it's a sp specific case, and I'll just go in and you know, change it to 720 and you know, uh, 1280 and now I'm ready to go. And I, I figure that's the, for me, it's the easiest way to do it. Cause I know the, the standards. So actually I'll just drop back to that. So <clears throat> now that we have a little comp, you know, we can screw around in there and create something, but, um, I'll take a comp that I threw together the other day and I'm just going to cut it down to, um, a, a short, um, We're going to go ahead and trim this down and now when we go to export this one second or very close to, we can now go into uh, composition, add to render queue and here we go. Now if you're exporting for previews, I would suggest just going half because that would give you um, 540p basically. Uh, which is not really a standardized uh, resolution, but it's, uh, I guess actually it might be PAL in uh, in Europe. But um, yeah, so I would say uh, uh, dropping it down to half, that way the export times are significantly better. It's like four times faster. Um, but yeah, if you go to full, when you're doing a, a an actual export, keep best settings. That way you're, you know, wherever you checked, you know, your FX on, they will uh, export that way. So now you have, um, when you go to export, you can, you know, I, a lot of times I just go off of a, a low quality DNS HD and then I'll base off of that. So, you know, you export your audio if you have an audio channel and go into format options. And after you insult um, Avid's DNS HD codec, um, you'll be able to come in here and I think it's actually based off of the QuickTime. So make sure, you know, you're in the QuickTime breakdown and then you go into the codec and um, so you go into codec settings and then this is where you'll see um, uh, kind of your options so in here you can drop in and you know sort through you know different export settings so if you were going to be exporting and you want to have it look good um, I would suggest going with um, with this one which is DNS HD 175 um, 8 bit a bitch per channel. And then um, the next one up is 10 bits per channel, which is a lot more color information. But um, honestly, unless you're you're working for a film, um, not really worth it. There's just, I mean, your, your files are gonna be uh, enormous when you're exporting from here with these settings. So um, a quick a quick export, I'd sometimes do like a 36 uh, megabits per second. But um, yeah, if you're going for a final and you wanna be you know, this is your proof copy or your, uh, your archiving copy. I just say, go for this one and you're basically good to go. Um, so then, you know, you do this, close it down and I'm actually going to duplicate these so you can, um, so I can, uh, I'll do it in post. Uh, so basically I'm going to, um, export this and I'm going to export a, um, another file, uh, an H264, and then I'll export um, another codec. So you can see the file sizes between them. And you'll see this is one second. So we'll, we'll use the exact same comp and um, we'll be able to take a look at that. I ended up exporting four different settings. So I had QuickTime Animation, which is basically, um, uh, in my mind, I see it as uncompressed. It, it's in a codec that um, really there's no degradation of, of quality. So um, I did that one and then for uh, uh, completely different side of the spectrum. I also did H2 dot, uh, H.264 um, and I do 25 megabits per second. I think that matches like around what DSLRs are, um, but I could be wrong. Uh, then I did two different DNS HD um, export settings. So I did the uh, the 38 megabits per second and the 175. 
<clears throat> now, if you look at the file sizes, you can definitely see that um, if we sort by size, the animation is clearly way more data. It is a lot more going on. So um, chances are that is the highest export you'll be able to get uh, really out of um, uh, After Effects that is a uh, cross-platform and you can use it on Mac or PC without having to worry too much about um, if they'll be able to support it. The only downside, the only downside is they just might not um, uh, have the the capacity to hold all that data. Um, so if you export a big project, you have to think this is only one second, you know, and that one second turned into 150 uh, megabytes. So um, DNS HD is a lot more manageable in terms of file sizes, but there's compression. Now, um, one second being 20 megabytes, uh, not too bad. Um, so let's go ahead and take these right into our project. Now, um, whenever you're creating a, um, a project in, in After Effects or uh, Premiere, when you wanna make a timeline, your best way to do it is just take the project that you wanna base everything on, or the file that you wanna base all the dimensions and everything off of, and just drag it right over here and it'll create a new uh, sequence or timeline for you based off of those settings. Um, so if I go through here and let's see, let's set this to a 200. And this is, I'm gonna drag these and we'll have the bottom layer be um, quick time. And then we'll go to DNA, uh, DNS HD 38 megabits a second. And then last we'll have H.264. So, now we can go through and actually click through to see the detail changes. Um, shockingly, um, and I've noticed this when I export it, the 38 megabits per second does not look as good as a 25 megabits per second um, H.264 file. Um, it's just the way the codec is handled and you can see clearly there's, there's spots now that the texture didn't carry through, there's artifacting around the edges. So um, if you're doing a quick export, might as well do H.264. Um, now, uh, let's go to DNS HD's uh, 175. So here's um, basically a point of reference, and then this is QuickTime. To the naked eye, I don't see really a difference, at least not in this part or this angle um, of what's being shown. Let's go off into the corner, and let's see. Yep, I don't really see a difference. So um, in this case, you might be fine with DNS HD, um, and you can even deliver in DNS HD if you're working with a, another professional that uh, you know either has Media Composer or just downloaded the codecs because they're free to use. Um, but yeah, I would suggest uh, making sure you set your comps up right for what your delivery is going to be. So if you're going to 1080p or you're going to you know downsample to 480p, you might as well start with something that that's larger. And that way, if they ask for something higher, because you cannot take a 480p um, uh, composition in After Effects and then export it at a higher resolution without the potential of throwing off some things in your comp, whether uh, let's say if you have images in your comp or, or um, uh, designs that are in your comp that are not vector based, they will not scale properly. So you want to be working in a timeline that you know you're either downsampling to or exporting um, uh, with those exact settings. Uh, scaling up a project is never really a, a great idea. So uh, keep that all in mind when you're when you're working on your uh, After Effects projects and then you import them into Premiere Pro. Um, so basically stay away from the 38 megabits per second unless you have to. Uh, 25 is not bad if you're going H.264. And um, obviously QuickTime's amazing and so is the uh, DNS HD 175 megabits. So. All right, well, hope this uh, helped you out and good luck when you're uh, creating your things in the future.